Okay, good morning, everybody. Um, so my name is Mark McLaughlin, and I'm Director of Engineering for OpenStack at Red Hat. Um, I'm Irish, I came from Dublin yesterday. Um, I actually spend a lot of time in France, but my French is absolutely terrible, so you're going to have to listen to me in English today. I, I apologize for that. Okay, so what I want to talk today um, is a kind of a, a subtle, somewhat meta issue that honestly I've been spending 15 years thinking about and I, I care an awful lot about, um, but it is quite subtle. Um, but the reason I want to talk about it today is because as Thierry mentioned earlier, hi Thierry, <laughs> um, as Thierry mentioned earlier, OpenStack is going through the hype curve. Um, and I think at this point, in the hype curve, I think some of our you know, major um, companies involved with OpenStack, they're kind of rethinking what their investment in OpenStack and open source should look like. Um, and I think they're getting a little bit more realistic and, and they're thinking quite hard about the value of their investment. Um, I think that's really, really positive. But what I wanted to do to share today was just talk about how Red Hat thinks about this problem, how we go through that thought process of thinking about how we invest um, in open source, particularly um, from the point of view of sustainability, so that, that our investment will continue into, into the future. <coughs> so my thinking on this really um, starts with a very personal story. Um, as I was leaving university, preparing to leave university, I decided I wanted to work full time on open source. This, this is what I wanted to build my career around. Um, there's lots of amazing people working on open source in their spare time and achieving amazing things. I, I never felt I could do that. I always felt that in order to make the impact with open source that I wanted to make, this needed to, to be a full, full time thing for me. But why should anyone, why should any company pay me to work on open source? What, what value would my, my contributions to open source bring to the company? So I spent a lot of time thinking about that. And then as I was employed to work on open source, um, it was with Sun Microsystems at the time, um, I really very quickly found that my employer was you know, making a big investment in open source. Um, it was a big period of tor turmoil for Sun Microsystems. Um, and what they really needed help with was understanding how to invest in open source, where exactly to invest, and, and why. Like, what, 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 why were they doing this? Um, and it was just interesting to see you know, someone fresh out of university like myself and that I could actually make a big contribution to helping the company understand what they were doing, what their strategy was, um, mostly because I'd spent a lot of time thinking about what value I could bring. So it was, it was an interesting experience. Um, I, I think over the years, I've, it's continued to be a theme in what I've been doing, helping my employer understand what they're doing, helping other companies um, understand how, where, and, and why they should invest in open source. And I've really ended up boiling it down to something quite simple. And it seems, very, it seems overly simplistic to begin with, but your investment in an open source project should be directly related to your business needs from the project. Right, that that's almost sounds like a really, really obvious thing, right? Whatever investment you're making um, in a project, you should understand what the, what the business value you're, you're going to be getting from that investment. To dig into that a little bit, I just wanted to start with a few anti-patterns. Um, so these are, if you if you take. Um, my statement that your investment in the project should be directly related to your business needs, I, I guess these are some patterns I've seen people follow that you know, really don't um, tend to work in my experience. Um, so the first one is, these are, remember these are things I, I don't think you should do, generally. Um, the first thing is to focus on features. Um, theory describes this in, in a blog post a couple of years ago about focusing on ta tactical contributions. Um, the positive thing about this is you're looking at the project, you're looking at your requirements, you're looking at the, what the project um, provides, and you're focusing on the things that the project doesn't provide. So on the face of it, this is focusing on things that are important to your business. That's really good. But it's failing to really think about the, the, the kind of basic needs of the project, right? What, 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 what kind of infrastructure, what um, basic processes within the project, what community um, uh, infrastructure kind of is needed in order for you to deliver th those features to the project. Um, so it's almost like trying to, you know, put the roof on the house without really thinking about the foundations of the house. Um, so I, I think that's, as a starting point, I think that's the, the, generally the wrong place to focus. 
Another anti-pattern is to, um, to think about your contribution to the project as a dona donation. So this is about our choice of language affecting the way we think about things. If we describe our investment in an open source project as a donation, how long will you continue that donation? Um, what value are you seeing from that donation? Um, it, it, it's, it's kind of a, an intangible way of, of, of thinking about, or, or even failing to think about why you're investing in the project. Um, and that, uh, to me, the, the problem here is about sustainability. Um, in, in times in the, f in the future, um, perhaps when times start getting more tough, will this donation that you're making suddenly become the bottom of your priority list and the first thing you, you, you stop doing? Somewhat related, somewhat similar is the notion of investing in open source projects for recognition, right? For some sort of status, for some sort of, um, you know, feel good factor of our, our, our marketing factor for, that you get in return for your investment. So in OpenStack, we've done a really, really good job of creating a competition between companies for the, you know, the top contributor um, status. And we've, you know, a whole website um, dedicated to a lot of interesting different statistics on our, our contributions to the project. Um, and that's really good. I think it's a really good way of understanding which, w what companies are doing in the project. Um, but within your company, if you set for your employees the goal of achieving a certain status in, in those statistics, I think you get to see some really, really strange results from that. Um, you see people working on, on really trivial things, some people you know, trying to do lots and lots of um, commits, but you, know, you, you don't really understand the value, you don't really understand the importance or, or the, the, the long-term impact of, of those changes. Another um, pattern that I think we've seen um, people follow um, is this notion of having 100% dedicated upstream re resources, individuals, teams. Um, and as, as far as I can see, these are people at um, many of the companies involved with Open, OpenStack, at least historically, who, um, you know, the, the company is investing in the project, is asking it, these individuals to work on the project, but really giving them no um, direction or no understanding of what import, what's important to the company. And so, you know, for the people involved, this is a really, really exciting opportunity. Um, your company is telling you the project is really important to the company, um, and generally, whatever you do to help the project be successful is good for the company. Um, but I think what maybe we've seen in recent times and, and what was always my worry about this and my experience with this is when you have people who are working on a project um, but the business doesn't understand the value that these people are bringing to the business, um, once the company starts looking around for um, uh, prioritizing where it's doing work, um, often this team kind of are these individuals struggle to really un under un articulate their value to the business and they're often the first people to be kind of moved off a project um, so I think this is where you know you have people working on a project and it's really good but they're really disconnected from the business and, and I, I think that that that's uh, a sustainability concern it's 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 a it's, it's a question about whether those people will always be working on the project kind of related to all of these and almost pulling a bunch of all of these together um, is this really interesting notion that companies should um, uh, donate a bunch of money to uh, um, a non-profit foundation and that non-profit foundation will employ all the developers on the project um, and then the company will achieve I guess some sort of recognition for being a sponsor of the project. Um, now don't get me wrong here the OpenStack Foundation has some really, really great people on Thierry's team. They're some of my favorite people working on the project. But I think Thierry explained their role very well earlier as more of a, a kind of a facilitation, a facilitation role, enabling the upstream projects, helping coordinate, that kind of stuff. Um, but as a, as a general systematic way of having people work on a project, um, I don't think it's um, a sustainable approach, right? It's this kind of notion that the, the companies are, are making a don donation, they're, the value they're getting from that donation is somewhat intangible, and then it, it turns out to be something that's easily, um, easily shut off in the future. So one interesting example of this, which is not related to OpenStack really at all, 
is um, the experience over the last couple of years with OpenSSL. Um, so OpenSSL, everyone I'm sure was aware of the, the heart bleed vulnerability that happened over two years ago. And I think one of the realizations that came out of that was this is a really, really critical project, um, uh, vital for so many businesses out there on the internet, and somehow very, very few people are investing in the project. That the, 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 the number of people working on the project, the resources available to the project were absolutely minimal. So the Linux Foundation, in response to that, has created something called the Core um, Infrastructure Initiative, which is companies donate money to the Linux Foundation, the Linux Foundation pools those, that money, um, does some planning and then invests in, in various different critical projects like this. I think that's a positive step forward, it's better than what we had before, but to me it also kind of, it's a failure mode, right? It's like, it's where companies failed to see previously the value investing in these critical projects, and this is our kind of fallback position um, on that. Now, one, one interesting thing, which is, you know, I, I must admit somewhat difficult to explain sometimes, this really interesting initiative of the Linux Foundation, which Red Hat is supportive of, Red Hat actually isn't a member of. And I, I think this is, you know, goes back to everything I've talked about here today. Red Hat has always contributed to OpenSSL, always seen it as a critical project, always been heavily involved with it and other projects. Um, and the funding we want to direct to those projects, we feel, is more sustainable if it comes through us directly being involved with the projects. So, um, you know, I guess this goes to, to, to Red Hat's model for, for thinking about how to invest in open source projects. So that was a list of anti-patterns, a list of things not to do. Um, how about turning it around on its head and, and talking about how to positively go about doing this? What, what's, the, what's the ways to think about this? So I think the first place to start is think strategically, right? Take, take a step back. Um, you're investing in something you don't control. So you, you, you're never going to control this, this open source project, but you don't have to be powerless, right? You can, you can um, empower yourself to, to, to have an effect on this project and to ensure um, its success and its, its success in, into the long term. So the first thing to do is to, to think about the future of the project. Um, if you're making an investment in this project, you're probably going to depend on this project for a long time to come. Um, how long is that? Like, can you see yourself still being dependent on this project's success in 10 years' time further? Um, and if you start thinking in those time scales, you know, you really start thinking about, thinking differently about your priorities. And another way to think about your priorities, and this might sound very negative, is imagine the worst case scenario. Uh, um, imagine um, if you've invested heavily in OpenStack and the entire community disappears and you're left as the only contributor to the project, essentially. What would you work on then? What, 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 where would you, you invest your staff? Where would you invest your resources at, at that point? Um, that's not going to happen because OpenStack, you know, I think all of us are here today and, and you know, making the choice to, to, uh, to buy into OpenStack because we see this long-term future that it has. But if you went through that worst case scenario thought process, it, it, it really helps you think about what your priorities should be. Um, another thing to think about is um, influencing the project. So anybody who gets involved with OpenStack, an individual or a company, they, they're going to have their own view of what success looks like for OpenStack. Um, there is you know, somewhat of a community consensus about what the future of OpenStack should look like, what, what success looks like, but you're going to have your own slight different take on that, your, your own kind of uh, views on that. Um, and how do you go about influencing the project in that direction, in that direction towards your views for, for, for what success looks like? And the way you do that is community leaders who understand your company's um, vision for the project um, out there helping to influence the direction of that project in that way. Sometimes people look, that, look at that as kind of a uh, a kind of a, a negative, almost evil influence of, of, of corporations over the project, I look at it completely differently. I think every company that, that gets involved with the project has a very positive and um, kind of diverse view of the success of the project, and it's really when all those diverse views come together that, that we really get this, um, 
huge opportunity for, for, for innovation. But the way those views get brought into the project is through leaders who are employed by these companies bringing those views into the project. So if you want to influence the project, if you want to um, you know, feel that your company, company's views are being heard inside the project, the, the way to do that is to grow um, a set of leaders within your, project, or within your company who, who will then have that influence over the project. A third thing to think about is expertise. Um, and this is the more, um, thanks, this is more kind of concrete, more immediate term one. Um, in order for anyone to be successful with any technology, you know, you need, you need to have expertise available who not only understands how the technology works now, but kind of understands the history of the technology and understand where, where things are going in the future. Um, the interesting thing about experts on, on a project like, like OpenStack is they only remain experts if they're still involved, if they're actively working on the project day to day um, and, and continue to be involved. But from my experience, the, the way to achieve this, this balance of, of having expertise on your staff available to you while still being involved with the project and still continuing to be experts is for these experts to be embedded in your teams with, with people who aren't working full-time on the, on the project um, and maybe spending, I don't know, 20% of their time, 40% of their, their time on kind of downstream tasks, helping the rest of the team be successful with things that are, are more immediate, pressing needs of the business, and the rest of their time working um, upstream on the project, driving the project forward, investing in the future of the project. Um, and I think it's amazing how much value that kind of ex expertise brings to your team. Um, without kind of spending all of their time kind of working on, on kind of direct downstream stuff. So there are the, the three, I guess, key ways that, that I go about thinking about but how um, Red Hat invests in, 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 open or in open source projects. Um, this presentation very much isn't a sales pitch, very much didn't want to do that, but one thing I did feel the need to mention was this is the way we think about investing in open source projects, but we also think about our customers as investing open source pro projects by proxy through us. So if you have a subscription with Red Hat, we think of you as um, investing in the project, um, helping to safeguard its future, um, helping our, you know, that you're gaining some indirect influence over the project yourself, um, and that you're gaining access to our expertise on the project. So all of those things I talked about, um, we very much feel we're bringing that thinking, that, that value, uh, that, that kind of way of investing into the project to our customers um, almost by proxy. So a, an interesting thing um, happened for us on the OpenStack team at Red Hat um, about, about a year ago. Um, Alexis Monville is um, on our team, another Frenchman, um, and what he brought to the team was some really kind of challenging new ways of thinking about, but how to set our direction, how to, how to measure our goals. Um, and we started using a framework called Objectives and Key Results. Um, I won't try and explain what those are about, but basically you're setting yourself some goals and you're, you're trying to put very concrete measurements against that so you can track how you're doing against the goals. What I struggled with starting a year ago was really the question of how do we set a measurable goal about our investment in, in the open source project. So if we set a whole bunch of goals around um, really concrete business things, how do, how do we ensure that we don't get off track with our, our investment in the OpenStack project? Um, so I set this vision for this objective and I said we want to have teams of engineers with the required motivation and an understanding of Red Hat's vision empowered with the necessary time, encouragement, recognition, working upstream to drive and influence many diverse parts of OpenStack. So this was the vision. This, was, this is what I want to achieve, but how to put a measurable goal around that. We talked about contribution statistics, number of PTLs, number of core members. All of these things really felt they were like the anti-patterns I talked about earlier. Um, Russell Bryant and Doug Hellman on our team um, hit on this solution quite recently and, and we're feeling very good about it. We've decided to survey our entire team with these four questions. And it's basically about, does your team have 
um, good input on design decisions, bug fixes, processes, um, and how do you feel about the level of inve investment your team is making upstream? Um, we only started this a couple of weeks ago. We have something like 70 results, which is pretty decent engagement for a survey like this. Um, and basically what we're seeing is results like this. We're seeing roughly 80% of the engineers on our team feel we're making um, about right, uh, about the right level of investment in, um, in OpenStack. Maybe 15% think it's not enough, and others are on the too much don't know side. Um, and I think what we're observing is that this, this, problem, this feels actually like a pretty good balance, right? We actually don't want to optimize things so that every single individual on our team thinks we're uh, making the, exactly the right investment upstream. Probably about 80% is, is probably about what we want to achieve. But this, doing this survey regularly, doing this survey every six months will really help us make sure that we're not deviating from our commitment to the, 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 the the, the upstream project. Um, so we feel really good about this results, really feel about this, uh, good about this as a model for, for um, ensuring our continued investment. Um, and to get back to the point I was trying to make at the start, we're doing this, we're thinking, we're thinking through all of this in order to achieve sustainability. Any of you here who are making a business decision to rely on OpenStack, it's a long-term decision and it's a, it's, a, it's a big decision for your business to make. Um, and right at takes our responsibility towards this very, very seriously. When you make that decision, um, we want to do our part to make sure that OpenStack has that long, um, very, very long-term, very successful future that you really need for, for you to be successful with your choice. So thank you very much.